Welcome to KCL for Revit. I'm Kevin Coachman. We're going to give you a tour of KCL tools for Revit. You all should have a control panel on your right side that you can ask questions or send us notes that we will try to address during or after the webinar. I like to get started with our website, kclcad.com. Just to remind everyone from this page or website, you can go to Access KCL, and whether you download and install the KCL BIM CAD Designer, or you run the plugin for Revit, they will do the same thing. They will install KCL, BIM CAD Designer, and add-ins for full Revit. So if you have a version of full Revit that does not have the KCL toolbar, shut down your Revit and KCL, run the installer, and that should take care of it. I have Revit 2023 running, and you can see there is a KCL toolbar. You can run it back to old versions, I think as old as 2018 with KCL right now. On this toolbar, the very first thing we're gonna start with is KCL catalog. It's best to run KCL from inside of Revit. When you do that, we know which version of Revit you're running from. And we hide the AutoCAD tools, as well as the A and the N button above the previews, just to make it a little bit cleaner for the Revit users. The very first thing I wanna show is we're going to do a little pretend here, and that if you're a Revit LT user, which we do not recommend, the one thing you can do with KCL is search our giant library Revit families. You can move your mouse towards the middle of the Revit preview. It changes from an arrow to a hand. You can click, drag, and drop. You can do this in Revit LT. That is our main functionality besides providing the data. But you can also do that with full Revit. But if you use drag and drop, you don't get some of the other functions we're gonna talk about today. So drag and drop to Revit or Revit LT is functional. It's a good backup for full Revit, but you're better off using the R button. That will take you over to Revit and load the family. It'll also put it on the right specialty or food service family category. So we're gonna take a look at that. So Revit LT users, if you're there, sorry, no add-ins available, but you can drag and drop. In KCL, I'm gonna just go look for a manufacturer. So we'll say Baker's Pride. I can see here we have a Revit family. I'm gonna click R for Revit. It's downloading the file on a different window. I can see a green progress bar. And now this is loaded in. And I hit escape when I'm done because Revit will keep letting you load families. So this family is currently specialty equipment. And I was able to load it with the R icon. A few things that are unique to KCL and sending to Revit. We'll stick with the same manufacturer for a minute. This does not have a Revit family. Longtime KCL users know this, but newer users, you can hit the R button. We'll take that 2D AutoCAD plan front and side, convert it into a usable Revit library or Revit family. Now, when I say this, <coughs> excuse me, bear with me. This is the plan view, looks fine. If I hit edit type, I can see utility data manufacturer name, model number, okay? So I can use this in Revit schedules, which Revit is built in schedules we're not gonna get into today, but what I want you to see is that you can take AutoCAD through KCL to Revit, and you can see here are items that we loaded earlier. We can move them up in the elevation view. They were sitting below the ground. So KCL can load the families. 
they look good until you go to your 3D view. If you're taking an AutoCAD to Revit, this is just a cube that has those images on it. It's not meant for 3D. It's meant to give you that plan front view and be able to tag and schedule it. So KCL 2D to Revit is strictly there to give you something to hold in place dimensionally correct items. We're going to go over to Altersham. And a similar but different example here is I have a 3D CAD, but no Revit. There's no Revit preview. If I hit the R, it'll load it up. I'll place it. And that actually is a good looking 3D. So any AutoCAD 3Ds we have will work well with Revit. They will appear, they will be able to schedule, and I can choose different views. My elevation view looks just fine. If I need to, I can go ahead and turn off extra layers through visibility graphics. If we have time, we'll get into that today. So first thing we wanted to really cover was sending to Revit. You're clicking the R. You find the item, and now if it's a native Revit, like we saw in Baker's Pride, you're going to get a Revit. If it's AutoCAD only, then you're going to get the AutoCAD 2D or 3D that's available. If you're a Revit user and wanna only look at Revit files first, just to the left of the model number box, there's a filter I can turn on Revit. There's other filters for Energy Star, user data, and certain dealer buying groups right now. We're looking at the Revit filter. If I clear my manufacturer, we have approximately 86,000 items that have native Revit. The list of manufacturers is over 200. So now when I'm searching by category, manufacturer, or model, I'm guaranteed to get something that has a native Revit file. So we'll do one more here. Take a Broster unit, go back to this one over here. <laughs> Some of your Revit previews will show a drop down. In this case, it lets me choose between different controllers. I set to what I want, hit R for Revit. and it will load that family into my project. If I go back to KCL, one manufacturer that I wanna just show, it's been kinda of cool to see these. And we'll go for the cashier counter. That you see here, this drop down is a little bit longer and it has colors. I'm not sure how well it shows through the GoToWebinar, but as I pick, it will show me the different colors. So when I send that to Revit and I do my shading or rendering, it's already set to the right color. That's all built in for the manufacturer. When the content creator creates those different types, then KCL can display the different types. And here we'll go for our 3D view again. And this is live, so let's hope we got it here. And there it is. So you can see the red versus the stainless. If you brought it in with a different color, then that color would appear. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the plan. In KCL, so you've got single Revit's, you've got Revit's that have a drop down with different types. And then let's go over here, oh, we're on the wrong one, let's go to model number. Type it in the model number, I can see in Syncorator, this Revit file shows configurable. If I hit the R button, it's a little tough in the webinars because it doesn't always show on my other screen, but it's going to load the first base item, which is my spigot. When I'm done with the spigot, a message box appears that says place one instance of the heater. 
and now it loads the heater, which I can place anywhere around that. We call that a dependent family. You will find that sometimes when it says configurable. They're not attached in any way that I can still move them around. But the idea is KCL made sure you got both pieces. If you decided not to load the second one, that's on you. We at least prompted you for that. We call that dependent family. So what I'm trying to get across here is you've got simple AutoCAD to Revit 2D, 3D. You've got simple Revit, you've got Revit types, and you've got Revit configurable. It might ask you if you want to show legs or casters. It might ask you different heights. You'll see different options as you pick the manufacturing model. That's how you're going to load and send your families over to Revit. Now, earlier we were talking, I clicked on one and it shows me specialty equipment. I'm gonna go over to KCL and some newer tools we have are underneath modify settings. Modify settings, the parameter tab, you can tell KCL to set text as uppercase when we load into Revit. You can also tell us where to load the family. So I'm going to change this to food service equipment. Hit save. And let's go back out and load another family. I want to find a simple family. Here we go. When I hit R for Revit, it's going to send it over to Revit just like we did before. This time when we place the family, I'm going to show you that the manufacturer model number are uppercase. It's coming. And when I click on the family, on the left, it says food service equipment. So this time it automatically loaded into the family category that I want. If I scroll down to look, we don't have uppercase there. I'll have to take a look. Let's make sure we did that right. We have that. So I'm gonna have to come back and see, maybe we've got a little bug going on that I missed. The modify settings, parameter tools, are for loading new equipment. Similar, we have a button called parameters and more that will let me change categories after the fact. So I can select all these specialty equipment items and say change the family category to food service. Or I could say find all the food service and change the specialty or find casework. So KCL can help you after you load the families into your project and help you when you are putting in new items. The same kind of steps I just did here, and you'll see the more items you pick, the longer it takes. But now if I click on any family, they're now in food service. If I just wanna take these two items, parameters and more, uppercase, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna do identity data, but I can uppercase all sorts of fields. If I said, I wanna do my remark fields, I can choose identity and remark. I can go all uppercase, all lowercase, Pascal cases, first letter capitalized, the rest are lower in each word. And then this camel case is a bit odd, it's the second sentence. Once our development team said we can do it, we said put them all in there. So we're gonna to convert to uppercase. And again, the idea is to save you time when you're working on your Revit projects. So now we're all uppercase text here. We'll click this family and we're uppercase text again for the manufacturer and descriptions. So that was modify settings and parameters and more. I'm gonna jump over to something else in KCL that if you're not aware, we have a button called custom blocks. And I'm gonna do 
two custom blocks. We're just going to do a simple work table. Set it the way we want. Now I'm doing this from KCL. From KCL, I have the same functionality that I do have in Revit. I can change my sizes, configuration, generate this as a 3D. It's very quick and I can hit R for Revit. This is like the AutoCAD 3D to Revit. It's functional, it's gonna look good, but I can't edit this. We'll come back to that. There's a similar button, but different, that says KCL Revit Custom Blocks. That loads the same screen. It even remembers what I did last with my settings, but if I generate this, and it depends on the speed of your computer and the complexity of the custom block, this will make a native Revit custom block. That means I can make modifications to it in Revit. So we're gonna wait for that to build. Again, sometimes they go a little faster, depends on your computer and your Revit, and here we go. So now this could be modified. I can move pieces, I can make changes. When I'm done, I can say load in a project or load and close. We're gonna put that one next to the other table. And let's go back to our 3D view. So there's a slight difference in coloring and you can see the AutoCAD, I had a 2D view, I'd have to turn off my visibility for that layer but they're virtually identical and so our opinion to the users is if you're building a custom block and you're not planning on changing it the autocad one is quickest but if you do need native revit or you want to make changes then have a little patience and use the kcl revit custom blocks all right i'm just trying to check off a couple of our new things here Now, when I brought either of these tables in and I go to look at them, there's no utility data because a table doesn't need it. If you're, an, if you're a Revit user and you wanna add electrical to the table, maybe you're putting an outlet in the table, we have again, that same tool, parameters and more, I can use add parameters. I can pick one or more families Instead of editing and manually doing this, I can say, I want to add amps, I want my rough and height, volts, and watts. <laughs> KCL will add those parameters for you. Now I can edit the data. So that's a big time saver there if you need to add parameters. If you use your own shared parameter file, if you don't have one, don't worry about it. We would recommend going to Modify Settings Parameters, link your shared parameter with KCL. The advantage is that then we can add your custom parameters with our tool Add Parameters. That same tool will allow you to clear parameter values or remove parameters. And if you use our spec book and you need to quickly add a spec sheet, there's even the ability to add a user spec sheet. So those are the two buttons that will probably help you the most. In KCL, if I click on an item and I go over to KCL, I can say view spec sheet. This is like the AutoCAD hyperlink command. Revit does not have that built in, so we added a tool for that. I can even right click, add it to my quick access toolbar, now, if I go click another item, it's up here at the top. I don't have to go from my KCL tool. Revit does reset the quick access toolbar when you get updates for KCL. So you might have to add this button back by just right click and add to get there. So we've talked about the KCL loading button, Revit custom blocks parameters and more, and modify settings. I'd like to show a few more functions while we're here. That what about 
you have an item that you want to add back into the system. So if you find yourself modifying or creating your own Revit families, you can go to KCL. Get that up on the screen. And there's an add and edit button. When I hit the add button, I can go to the manufacturer I'm currently on. I can clear that and go to any manufacturer in the list, or I can hit plus to add new manufacturers. So I'm just gonna go to my Kevin manufacturer that I already have. We're gonna make up a model number. Category, I'm just gonna put food slicer, doesn't really matter what it is. I go over to the Revit tab and then I browse. So we're gonna go find, excuse me, one of the manufacturers doing updates for this week. And I add my Revit file. If I wanna link a spec sheet, I can do that at the same time. It goes back to my last folder and I'm gonna hit save. That takes the Revit file and the PDF file uploads it to your company private cloud. So you're seeing in real time how long it takes. It's pretty quick. We're gonna go over to the Kevin manufacturer. And that's our food slicer and our spec sheet. I can now hit R for Revit. And place that item in the project. But now everyone in my company has access to that user file. So again, this webinar is for trying to help you save time. And instead of editing the same item over and over or having to go look for it in an old project, add it to your KCL. And then all of your users have access, whether they're at home or on the road. I don't know if this was a large file. We're going to find out. It's still processing on me. There it is. And I have this item. And inside it has all the data, whether it was modified or set up by you. If I have an existing manufacturer, we're going to go back and turn off the Revit filter because all these have Revit. You can use the edit button. The edit button allows you to edit the item that you're on. Even if there is a Revit, I can browse out and just grab a different one here. And now KCL will supersede the original manufacturer file with your version. Again, just for your company in your private cloud, no one else has access to your data. Now this one made a user version of that item. So you can quickly add or edit. You can even remove if you don't want to keep your user versions. So we have put in a number of items, a couple other functions that KCL has. We can export to AQ. I can select or I can hit the export button. You can decide you want to include yet nested items or not as separate items. So yes. And you can tell KCL to get all the food service or all the specialty equipment or all families with a QF prefix. So there's ways to have KCL select the items for you if you don't want to select them. <coughs> Test Revit to AQ. The biggest issue is remembering where you saved your file. Then you have to go over to auto quotes, start the project and import it, and auto quotes will match KCL as best as it can. The same philosophy here is I can export back out to KCML, a KCL, an XML file or groups. And then here we have generate spec book. So if I don't want to go to any other programs, I can generate a spec book directly from Revit. And again, if you haven't seen this, you can have many options and configurations, cover pages, table of contents, 
each item can have a cover page with or without utility data. And I'm just going to run the preview. The more items you have, the longer it takes. But here I can see the main hot water dispenser has a spec sheet. The other one doesn't. My custom table doesn't. If I include pictures, utility data, that's what will appear. And each page has your own headers and footers. From here, I can download one giant PDF, or I can download as a zip file all of the PDF files in my project. Okay, so we got those. We talked about that. The last thing I'm going to mention is not directly for the Revit user, it's for the companies that kind of mix and match the type of users you have. I'm going to open up KCL from outside of Revit. And I'm just going to add two or three items to a napkin sketch drawing. Okay. So we're going to take this underbar unit, hit N for napkin. Napkin sketch is included with KCL. It's meant for salespeople, that your DSRs, someone who doesn't have AutoCAD or Revit. And what I'm going to show you is how I can take these few items here and I'm setting this up in napkin. I could then show my customer what it looks like. Well, let's go back here. I'm trying to look for the same items here from the same manufacturer. that I can send these to Revit from napkin sketch. So if your DSRs want to use napkin sketch, they can put item numbers and schedules. We, we did a whole demo, it's on YouTube the other day. Just gonna show you that this is what it looks like in 3D in napkin sketch. I have the ability to export back to KCL. I can edit data, I can assign item numbers here. I could have assigned them in napkin sketch, but I can take these three items now and say send to Revit. Now what KCL is supposed to do, and this is a brand new feature, is automatically load the families relatively in place to where they are. So you don't have to go select them each time. You can see the first one appeared. Second one appeared, and we do have an issue with hosted items. So if I picked a hosted item, it may or may not appear right now, but this is to give your Revit designers a good head start without having to work from scratch. And see, there's the hosted item. Okay, but these are now native Revit items. Let's go back to my view. There we go. Brought in automatically. So if you have users that are running Napkin Sketch or even AutoCAD, we can convert from Napkin Sketch or AutoCAD to a group, and then Revit users can send the file or all the models to Revit. And now I'd have to move them around. But that's pretty close if we went back to our napkin sketch that you can see there was some spacing between them and that's something that's brand new to help your team out so that's our rundown for kcl tools and toolbar for revit we appreciate you joining us today